In this video, we're breaking down the job aspect of being an umpire and how operating as an independent contractor basically makes this your own small business. We'll talk a little bit about what it means to be an independent contractor and all the steps that are required of you to successfully run your own business. When you work games below the professional level, you're usually working as an independent contractor. Now, there are benefits and drawbacks from being an independent contractor versus an employee, but the key that we're gonna focus on today is that you are responsible for running this as your own business. And with this being your own business, that means you set your goals, you build your brand, and you're ultimately the one responsible for developing your skills. So let's break down the various roles that go into the professional side of being an umpire. The first position we'll talk about is being the CEO. As this is your own small business, all the responsibilities fall on you. You set your own goals, you build your own business, you're responsible for the challenges that come towards you and how you respond to them. And ultimately, as you try to advance in your growth and development, you'll be competing with other umpires to be the best fit and the best available umpire to work games. And as we go through this lesson, we'll talk about the aspects on the field and off the field that lead to you advancing as an umpire. While you are a CEO of your own business, it's important to know that you're not necessarily alone in making this journey. There's great resources out there to help you develop as an umpire. Be sure to connect with mentors who can tell you more about the level you're working at, give you feedback, and help you figure out how to advance in your career. And it's very possible that you'll have more than one mentor depending on the aspect of your game you're looking to improve. Second, connect and build meaningful relationships with your fellow umpires. While I said before that you're competing with them for positions, you're competing with an overall group of umpires, but ultimately your umpires are your team. You need to be able to connect with them. You need to be able to work with them and get along with them to be successful on the field and in your own development. Finally, you can also go out and locate other resources to help you develop, whether it's training online through YouTube videos or Facebook communities, all the way to going to camps and clinics as they come up. There are plenty of resources out there to help you develop and reach your goals. Now, the next role you have inside of your small business is the operations. And you can think of it in two different sections. You're responsible for the on-field performance, but also the off-field responsibilities that come together to build up your overall reputation as an umpire. Our on-field performance can be broken down into four different categories. There's our rules knowledge, our mechanics knowledge, our game management, and our physical abilities. And then on the off-field responsibilities, we have to keep up with our scheduling, our pre-game responsibilities, post-game responsibilities, and constantly studying and striving to improve. The third role is compliance and HR. You can divide these responsibilities into three sections. The first is certifications. This includes things such as registrations, camps, clinics, and tests. These are all the paperwork aspects and the basic training requirements of the job. And it's important that we keep up with them and never let anything slip past the due date. While your assigners and association leadership will do everything they can to try and make you aware of the processes that need to be completed, you're ultimately the one responsible for making sure they get done. And oftentimes, there are deadlines associated with these various requirements, and that deadline is a no exceptions deadline. It's important to come up with these due dates as it comes through throughout the year. We have to remember that just because we're in the off season doesn't mean there aren't requirements that we're still needed to complete. The second aspect is relationships. There's no HR team to help you build and repair relationships. So it's important that in every interaction, you're thinking about what is the effect that this is going to have. And there are many relationships that you have to foster and build as an umpire. This includes relationships with assigners, leagues, umpires, coaches, fans. All of these different individuals will have a relationship with you and it's important that you're always looking to build your brand with these individuals. The third category of compliance in HR is professionalism. As we said, this is your own small business and it's important that we think of this as a job. This is a professional job that you're being paid to do. That means showing up with a crisp uniform. It means having good communication with both your signers, your bosses, and the coaches and players. It also means coming to every game with a positive attitude and a body language that shows you want to be there and you're engaged and ready to go. 
Next, you have the finance aspect of your job, and this can really be broken down into three sections. The first is getting paid. It's important that you understand the payment process as this can vary a lot from association to association. The two main ways it will vary. First is the method they use for paying umpires. There's a lot of variation in this and it can be anywhere from checks and cash to arbiter pay or direct deposit. And the second main differentiator is the frequency of the payments. Some associations pay once a week, others pay bi-weekly, some pay monthly, and some even pay just once a season. It's important that you understand how they're going to do that. While your signer likely uses an automated platform to try and keep track of pay and what you're owed, you should always go back and double check your games and that you're getting paid the right amount. Remember, there's a lot of changes that happen in the daily schedules for umpires, so be sure to double check each pay stub to make sure you got paid the right amount. It's not uncommon for changes to not be recorded or for mistakes to be made inside of the signing software. So be sure to always double check for errors and if you see them, bring them up to your leadership. Now, the second responsibility and one of the hardest ones is taxes. As an independent contractor, taxes are most likely not going to be withheld from your paychecks. So it's important that you save money to pay your taxes at the end of the year when tax time comes. And the third aspect of the finance part is expenses. And these are important because these can be used to offset your taxes that are due at the end of the year. And there's a lot that you can write off on your taxes. That includes things such as uniform costs, food, mileage, association dues, training. All of these can be used as deductions against your income to lower your tax burden. And for me, I find that mileage is the biggest deduction on my taxes. And usually if I do a good job keeping records of everything, I'm able to come out pretty much net even on the taxes owed in the deductions. So good record keeping, which is recording the games you worked, recording the mileage traveled, and saving and logging all of your receipts can really make a difference when tax time comes. Now let's talk about the marketing and sales of your business. The marketing is really discussing the brand of you as an umpire. Branding is defined as a system of identifying a product, service, or company as unique and differentiating it from the competition. Your brand identity is the expression of how you want your business to be perceived. And then your brand image is how the public really views your company. And it's important to define this for all of your target audiences. And that includes association leadership, assigners, umpires, league leadership, coaches, players, and fans. We need to make sure that our work on and off the field helps us to improve our brand and build better relationships with all of these different individuals. So let's talk about how we build a brand with association leadership. Association leadership is talking about the individuals who run your organization that assigns games. They're the ones responsible for what games you end up working, where you rank inside of the association, what games you're getting assigned to work. These are all decisions and processes that are laid out from your association's leadership. And a positive relationship with these individuals helps you to advance both inside the association and if you wanna go past the association into higher levels of baseball. The ideal brand identity for an umpire when it comes to working with an association. We wanna be known as a reliable and professional team asset characterized by a teachable, humble, and enthusiastic attitude towards continuous learning and growth as an umpire. Now, while there's a lot that goes into building that brand identity, here's three easy positives that you can immediately try to bring to help grow that relationship. First is being self-sufficient. Association leadership is usually vastly outnumbered by the membership, so try to be someone that doesn't require a lot of handholding to get everything done. Keep up with your emails, keep up with your responsibilities, and this will be a huge benefit to your association leadership. Two other factors that play a role in your reception inside of the group is your attitude and your listening. Attitude is how you present yourself both on and off the field. Are you engaged? Are you social? Are you active? Do you look like a leader? These are the aspects of a first impression that if done well, help you to build your brand inside of the association. And the third most critical aspect that association leadership wants to see out of you is your ability to listen. They want to know that you can take critical feedback 
and then use that feedback to improve your performance. Now, there are three aspects that immediately hurt your brand with association leadership. The first is being bad at taking feedback. As a general rule of thumb, when somebody is giving you feedback, always say yes. Even if you know that it's incorrect feedback, simply say, okay, I appreciate it. Take the feedback and don't argue with the person giving it to you. After you get the feedback, then you can decide whether or not it's feedback that you want to try to incorporate into your game. What gets back to leadership in a negative way is individuals who aren't willing to take feedback from other umpires. And this leads into the second aspect, which is being arrogant, and the third, which is unprofessional. Everyone can improve when they're on the field. There's no umpire who's worked a perfect game, and it's important that we're always striving to improve. We should go into every game with an understanding of what are we working on today, and how can I improve? Be a professional out there, and a professional is someone who's always trying to get better on the field. Not being great at balls and strikes, safes and outs, association leadership can move past that but they want to know that you're someone that shows the professional aspects of an umpire. Show up on time, look good in uniform, and manage your relationships. Now, let's talk about your brand with the assigner. This is the individual who's actually responsible for putting you on games. The brand you want to build is as a flexible and fast to respond team asset, known for your availability while maintaining a reliable and professional approach. Now, there's three quick ways to build this brand with your assigner. The first is be someone who accepts or declines games quickly. The assigner's number one job is to make sure that there are umpires on every game, and they hate anything that keeps them from accomplishing that goal. When they send out a game, yes, they've assigned it to someone, but as independent contractors, you have the option to accept or decline. But your speed in doing so can really benefit them in going out and trying to find another umpire should you not be able to take the game. The second is keeping your availability accurate. You have the ability to show on a calendar what days you're available and what days you're not. If you don't keep this accurate and you become an official that is consistently returning back games, this is going to make the assigner less likely to pick you when they're looking to assign games. By keeping this information accurate and up to date, this gives the assigner confidence that anytime they assign you to a game, they know you're going to be able to accept. And the third aspect that an assigner looks for when picking who will get games is someone who they will not get negative feedback about. They know that at times they're going to have to put umpires on games that they're not quite ready for. But by showing up with a professional demeanor and by hustling on the field, we can usually prevent there being negative feedback back to the assigner. And three quick ways to build a negative brand with an assigner. The first is being someone who declines a lot of games or turns back games after accepting. It's important that when you accept a game, you try to keep it. The second is being a slow communicator. When challenges come up or when you have situations happen in a game, quickly let your assigner know about it so that they can make the adjustments or respond to any complaints that a coach may have. And third, a lack of professionalism. When you're on the field, you're representing the assigner to both coaches, and the assigner wants a positive brand of themselves. When you look the part and act in a professional manner, this reflects positively for the assigner with the coaches. Now, what is your brand with umpires? The brand identity we're looking for is a hustling professional known for their coachability, exemplary professionalism, and positive attitude. Now, there's a lot that will build your brand, but I wanna talk about three ways that come to mind for me. When I'm looking at partners, I'm looking for people that communicate well, both off and on the field. This helps us to avoid a lot of problems, whether it's getting to the field, meeting there on time, who's taking the plate, all the way to handling situations on the field. The second is attitude. I wanna work with someone who's happy to be there, who's engaged, who's hustling, somebody who has the same passion for this as I do. And third is teamwork. We're the third team on the field. I want to work with someone who's a positive teammate and just like me is working to put on the best performance possible. And three quick negatives that come to mind. The first is umpires that are arrogant and think they're too good for their partner or for the level of baseball. Going to every game with a humble attitude, ready to learn. A second red flag is individuals that are uncoachable. Be able to take feedback from your partners. Like I said earlier, even if you're getting feedback you don't necessarily agree with, always take the feedback with a yes and thank you.
And finally, be a professional. This is a job, but we've all had good days and bad days at work. And we all know that we've had coworkers that have also had good days and bad days. Be someone that they can trust, someone that they can work with, and someone that can help out when they're struggling. Now, let's talk about your brand with a league. For a league, we want to be known as a reliable and efficient team player who is receptive to feedback, maintains a high level of professionalism, and approaches their role with a positive and respectful attitude. So your assigner and your association leadership, they're responsible for supplying umpires to a league. And a league is going to be more understanding than a coach of the fact that you're human and you're going to make mistakes. But there's three things you can do to build a positive relationship with a league that makes it really hard for a coach's complaint about you to cost you your job. The first is be easy to work with. Keep up with requirements for training or paperwork and represent the league leadership in everything you do. When you're working a game, you're the only neutral party and your job is to represent the league leadership. And the best way to prevent yourself from screwing this up is by being quiet. And I mean a couple things by that. First is that silence can't be quoted. And you certainly don't want to say something while representing the league that the league leadership is going to disagree with. Don't put your foot in your mouth. And the second is by having games that run smoothly. Don't create situations when you can avoid them. Now, three quick negatives that can hurt your brand with a league. The first is a lack of game control. Be able to work with the coaches, game administrators, and your other umpires to make sure that there's no sportsmanship issues in your games. And don't come into a game with a lack of humility. We know that you're not perfect. We're working a game with no replays. You don't have to be extremely defensive about every call. It's going to happen that you're going to miss calls, but don't compound on those mistakes by mishandling your relationship with the coaches. And third, be aware of the specific rules for your leagues. Most of the coaches have never read and will never read an official rules book, but they do read the one pagers of the rules specific to that game. So make sure that before any game, you're reviewing at least the points of emphasis for that season. Now, branding with a coach. We want a coach to think of us as a competent and approachable umpire who demonstrates consistent and fair decision making, maintains open lines of communication, and fosters a collaborative environment on the field while seamlessly officiating the game. Now, three ways to build that brand with a coach. First is a professional appearance and demeanor. First impressions are everything with coaches. So when you're walking onto the field, how do you look in your uniform? What's your body language say? Do you want to be there? Coming off as professional is a great way for you to be received positively by the coaches. Second is having open communication. A coach wants an umpire that they can go to with questions, an umpire that can defend their decisions. We don't need to have the coach coming out on every call, but don't be standoffish. Be open to conversations and discussions about rulings. The third positive is control of the game. A coach wants an umpire that keeps things organized and that keeps things moving. Now, three negatives that are almost impossible to recover from with a coach. The first is sloppy appearance. They're expecting to see a professional umpire and they don't want to see someone who looks like they just rolled out of bed. Second is poor hustle. It takes no talent to hustle, and hustle is an easy way to show that you're engaged and you want to be there. And the third is being unapproachable. Your body language and your tone of voice can immediately give off whether or not you're going to be approachable or not approachable for the entire game. And once coaches have the impression that you're unapproachable, they'll be more likely to argue with you and make comments from the dugout. Finally, I want to talk about your brand with the fans. We want to be branded as a knowledgeable and impartial officiator who upholds the integrity of the game, delivers consistent and accurate calls, and controls the game with a professional demeanor. Now, while you don't want to be talking to fans during the games and you really don't want to talk to them before or after, the fans are going to see you on the field just as much as the coaches because they follow the team. And over time, they'll start to recognize you when you're on their field and they'll have an impression about how you're going to run the game. Three quick positives are to show up to the game looking good in uniform, looking excited to be there, having good mechanics, crisp mechanics that everyone in the crowd can understand and identify, and controlling the game. They want to see an umpire that they know when he's behind the plate, everything is going to run smoothly. Now, three quick negatives that the fans can see. The first is aggressiveness. Remember, we want to be approachable when on the field. 
The second is a lack of hustle. They're excited to be there, they're watching their kids play, and to them, this is their major league game. This is the most important game happening for them that day. So be excited to be there just like they are and just like the kids are. And the third is showing up with an amateur appearance. These parents watch two types of baseball. They watch the type of baseball their kid plays in and they watch MLB baseball. And their impression of a good umpire is what they see in an MLB game. They wanna see the umpires working their kids games look just like the umpires working the MLB games. Obviously, we're not going to be the same quality, but try to come off with the same body language and the same professional mechanics. So that's our review of how you're running your own small business as an umpire. So before moving on to the next lesson, first, I want you to record what is your current goal in your development as an umpire. And second, I want you to leave a comment about what your brand identity is as an umpire.